Hello, hello, this is Umberto and this is the HVAC is in my channel. Today we're going to be talking about coil loss or pressure drop in a coil, all right? So let's get into it. So this topic is very important because when we're performing or we're, when we're sizing the ducts, we need to account for the pressure losses. Uh, and one of the pressure losses is consider considerably from the coil. Okay, so usually it comes from the coil and the filter, but the filter usually is 0.15 inches of water column for the supply, return diffusers, grill, balancing damper, we have 0.03 inches of water column, but the coil is the one that we need to calculate. So in this case, what we have, I'm going to select my color in pink. There we go. So this is the coil. Okay. So this is the coil. And since this is the HVAC easy math, we need to make it easy. Okay. Because this is, this is not a big deal. So what we're going to do is the coil, of course, is going to have in here the airflow incoming and outcoming. See, this is the in and this is the out. And why there is a pressure drop? And the reason I select this color, the, uh, maybe pink, because it ca it can it's noticeable. Okay, so in this case, why there is a pressure drop or pressure loss? Anytime that there is a loss or there is a drop, what happens is that there is an obstacle. Okay, obstacle right here, obstacle. Or in other words, other people, designers or contractors, they call it resistance. Okay. So when there is a resistance or an obstacle, let's call it resistance. There is always a pressure drop. So the fan is going to be able, based on the CFM and external static pressure, it's going to give you an external static pressure but there is going to be different types of resistance okay so the coil is one of them but as as mentioned this is depending on the cfm okay okay so now so so now we know this that the coil is an obstacle therefore it presents resistance but but there is two types of resistance type number one is when the coil is wet and type number two is when the coil is dry. Usually the coil is dry when it's in heating mode. Okay. When you're heating in winter, but most often the coil is wet when it's summer. So this means when it's in cooling mode, usually the contractors have to start the system, call for cooling and then let it run, let the system run for about 10 minutes in order for them to put the probes and measure the coil or the pressure drop on, on the coil. OK, so that's why in order to obtain the coil loss or the pressure drop in the coil, we need to consider the worst case scenario. That worst case scenario is when the coil is wet. But as you can see in here, which number is bigger, wet or dry? For example, for 600 CFM, the coil is, the pressure drop is 0 0.09 inches of water column. Whereas, whereas when it's dry is 0 0.08 inches of water column. OK, so let's let's go with it. Uh, and then this comes basically from the design CFM. OK, so once you selected the system, you're you're going to have a design CFM OK, that comes from the equipment. So from the equipment, see from the equipment, let's put in here equipment. OK, from the equipment manufacturer. OK, so from the manufacturer, equipment manufacturer, OK, manufacturer, from the data, manufacturer, equipment manufacturer. So what you have is a design CFM. What is the design airflow? OK, the design CFM is going to be equal in this case, for this example, 1061 CFM. OK. Because in previous videos, I've been, I've been selecting the system and everything. So we obtained a, a 1061 CFM. This is based on the manual. Okay. 
from the specs. Now, the issue with this, so since we have the design CFM of my system, of my blower, what happens is that there is an obstacle and restrictions. But this is coming from the spec sheets from the manufacturer. So the issue is that we don't have that number 10,061 CFM. However, you are able to approximate that number. Okay, so let's put this in here, go back to pink. So where is uh, 1061 CFM? So it's going to be between, in, in between these two numbers, 1000 and 1100. There we go. So basically it's in between. Let's put this in green. This is going to be 1061, 1061 CFM. All right. So now what we're doing is we're, we're going to be selecting this uh, when the coil is wet. So it's going to be between these two numbers. Now, so if, if, if you don't have so much time, you can easily maybe guesstimate the number. The pressure drop is going to be 0.2, between 0.2 and 0.23. So obviously you can guesstimate. Let, let's put in here a guesstimate. Guessing. So for example, if you guess, an educated guess is going to be equal to possibly see, uh, 0.61. So 1061 is closer to 1100, right? So it's going to be, it's not going to be 0 0.21. It's going to be most likely 0 0.22. But 0 0.22 what? Inches of water G. What is G? Water gauge. You can also call it inches of water column. Or you can also call like 0 0.22 inches of water column however it is the, the, depends depends on the notation so but since we're not guessing what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate this analytically okay so uh and also i'm gonna put an uh, i'm gonna put uh an abbreviation for this coil loss so what i'm gonna put is cl yeah i'm gonna put this in here cl cl for me is gonna be the coil loss or pressure drop there you go coil loss and then the units are going to be inches of water column there we go okay so how do we obtain what is the procedure so when you have a number and it's between two numbers what you have to do is a method of interpolation so i'm going to put that in here so since the number is not there it's in between we're going to interpolate interpolation interpolation there we go. So for interpolation is uh, there is a formula actually. So the formula is what I'm gonna write right here. So we don't have to get confused. This this formula is just in order to get more information, in order to be more precise about this uh, type of uh, procedure. Okay. So it's gonna be this equation y is gonna be equal to y one divided by x x one equals 2y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This is math, right? This is math. However, this formula is, is not that is not that bad. Absolutely not. So where does it come from? So it comes from when you have y and then you have x-axis right here, right? So we're taking this as linear, linear okay and this is based on two points so let's put this as two points right here point one point two this is gonna be point one this is gonna be point two so in point one you're gonna have x1 y1 and in point two x2 y2 and what happens is that that number, the number that you're looking at is in the middle or a little bit farther up. See, it's right there, right there. And that point is going to be P, which is X and Y. So actually, this is the equation when you know two points. OK, so what we're going to do in here is the following. Let's go with uh, green again. So what are my two points point one okay as we said is x one comma y one comma okay so in this case point one 
equals what is x is it cfm or is it pressure loss okay so in the x axis i'm going to have my cfm okay no but what we're trying to get is the pressure loss so let's put in here in the x axis we're going to have the cfm and in the y axis we're going to have the pressure loss which in this case what we did is we called pressure coil loss there you go so we have coil loss cfm therefore my x1 is again let's do it again cfm okay cfm1 comma and then coil loss one there we go so that would be let's continue with this pressure one no i mean point one is going to be cfm one what's the cfm one there you go it's 1000 so that's going to be 1000 but the coil loss is for 1000 it's going to be point two there we go point two inches of water column we have point one already what's going to be my point two the same process for the point two we're going to have the second point is 1100 cfm of course and then the pressure drop is going to be point 23 so we have our two points and what is the point p the point p is going to be x only x and what's x x is actually remember x is cfm x is 1061 and then y is the coil loss that we don't know cl so that's what we're trying to calculate. So once you have your point one and point two, let's let's summarize this a little bit better. So that way we don't get confused. We're, we're doing this little by little. Okay, see? Technically, this is your point one. There we go, point one. And then this is your point two. There you go, this is your point point two okay and this is your point p that is in between the two points point one point two point in the middle okay again point one point two point in the middle now if we continue let's continue with this we're going to plug the, those numbers in here and then what we have is y see what is y y is cl minus y1 is going to be the following uh, 0.2 there you go 0.2 this this one divided by x what is x x is 1061 minus x1 x1 is going to be 1000 and then that's going to be equal to y2 y2 is going to be um, 0.23 y1 is 0.2 divided by x2 so x2 is 1100 minus x1 which is um, 1000 okay so let's continue and if you do the math and you calculate coil loss that's going to be equal to let's do a little bit of math let's um do some math a little bit so in here that divided by 1100 minus 1000 parentheses and that's going to be times 1061 1000 and then that's going to be plus 0 02 in other words you are solving for cl which is the coil loss that we're looking at so now that we're looking for so the coil loss after you do the math and you calculate actually it is 0 0.218 which we are just going to round it up to two so that's going to be an in inches of water column okay there we go we obtain this okay so don't get confused uh, the reason i'm doing this math is in order for you to have the option to calculate these coil loss precisely in other words in order for you to calculate this analytically analytically okay 
So inches of water column. An inches of water column, just a side note, one PSI is a small pressure, but usually because it's so small, we take it in inches of water column. One PSI, as you can see, is 27.7 inches of water column. Okay, so this is the coil loss that we're gonna need. And also we're going to uh, take into account for any duct sizing calculation. Now, there is also another way. This is analytically. The other option is to make it practically. So you can go to the website, other option, other option in here, other option, option, there we go, is to use, use an online, uh, online calculator, calculator to interpolate interpolate so this is the process of interpolation and that's how you're going to obtain it okay so uh, th for the next part we're going to do that practically and that's going to be right now okay so now in this part of the video i wanted to show you how i obtained the, the coil drop numbers and basically what we did is we just need to know the model number and what we do is we put that in google and we're going to have the coil number so uh, what we're going to do is we have the model number and then since you have the model number you click and then this is the coil so the coil is based on the model number See, we're going to be able to download the manuals and the reason I'm using this brand is because I have access to the manuals, but if you have Carrier, Lennox, and if you don't have access to the manuals, you have to contact the distributor, the distributor or contact the factory, but they're going to be able to give you that. So now you have in here Goodman Cap F spec sheet, and then I'm going to show you how, how I obtained these numbers of pressure drop based on the CFM. So this is the indoor coils, and these are my model numbers. So if you keep on going down, you're going to be able to find a table where it shows you the CFM. There we go. This is the CFM. Here you go. CFM and pressure drop or coil loss in inches of water column. So I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. And this is the model that we were uh, analyzing. See, we did the calculation on how to obtain analytically this pressure drop right here. These two. See, so now that we have the pressure drop, see, and we calculate that analytically, what we're going to do is we're going to do that in practice because we, we don't have to spend so much time on calculating this number. However, it's, it's a very good idea to know where it comes from, how the calculation is done. But now in order to make it quicker, now we know where it comes from and we're going to go for an interpolator online. So let's see what, what Google gives us. So whenever you go here, you put interpolator, interpolator online. So the first option that shows is this in linear interpolator. So for this linear interpolator, you only have to put 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and you obtain your point. So what was 0 0.1? 0 0.1 was 1000 and then the pressure drop was, so the partner was 0 0.2, 0 0.2 was 1100 and then the pressure drop was 0 0.23. And then what we wanted to know is what's the pressure drop for 1061. You are missing one number, so you just hit calculate. And then you're going to be able to find the number that you're looking at. So you can easily see what, which method is faster. So if you want to be practical, you can use this online for free linear interpolator. It's very easy. There are other ones, as, as you can see, but we obtained the same value. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did hit the like button and subscribe and share. All right. Thanks so much. And I'll see you in the next video.